book of Acts, chapter 3, reading from verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as a lame man which was healed held, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But he denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God had raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom we see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. May Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Let us Look to the Lord again in prayer, seeking God's blessings upon ministry of the word. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to Thee asking Thy help for the preaching of God's word. Lord, be with the preacher as I deliver Thy word. Guard my tongue, guard my thoughts. Help me to speak from the word to Thy congregation, Lord. Lord, we commit the whole church into Thy hand, Lord. Open our ears, our hearts to receive Thy word. Lord, take away our distractions. Lord, help us to be focused on Christ and His Word. Lord, we pray that the truths we listen, O oh Lord, may Thy Spirit walk in our hearts to enable us to apply these truths in our life. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' precious name. On the last Lord's Day, we studied about the great miracle happened in the life of a lame man. A man who was not able to walk from birth tasted this great gift of miracle through Apostle Peter and then we saw him out of gratitude praising the Lord in the temple, immediately praising God from the bottom of his heart. Today we will continue to study from the same chapter, but today let us focus upon how Peter and John, as ministers of God, use their spiritual gift that the Lord has given to minister, particularly to this lame man. And also, let us look at the crowd around them and how they responded and what Peter and John or the ministers were exhorting them to do. So here we see Peter and John ministering to this man. He was expecting some financial gift as usual like any other beggar. He was expecting some physical gift from them. But we can see Peter and John ministering to them using the spiritual gifts that the Lord has graciously given to them. We know when we study the scriptures, the apostles were called by the Lord to follow him to proclaim the gospel around the world. Even in Great Commission, we read how the Lord commissioned them to go into the old, all the world and proclaim the gospel. In Mark, in the last chapter, we read how the Lord also enabled them to do miracles, to attest them that they are true apostles sent by the Lord. They are true messengers of God. The Lord gave them the ability to do miracles. And this not only involved healing, as we read from the scriptures, they were also given even the power to raise men from death. And we can see the apostles exercising such powers to testify of Christ, to proclaim the gospel and to attract people to Lord Jesus. So Peter and John were recipients of such a spiritual gift from the Lord. And they were always willing to minister to the people. They were always ready to minister to the people. 
especially if you are serving the lord as servants of the lord some of we some of us are already serving the lord the lord has given us spiritual gifts to serve the church to serve the people around us we may not be having the spiritual gifts in the same way where we have the ability to heal or to raise people from dead the extraordinary gifts but the lord has given us ordinary gifts to serve the church be it through preaching maybe it's through evangelizing praying the lord has given us spiritual gifts to serve the church serve the people of god around us and like we see how peter and john were always ready to minister to the people we must have that readiness to serve the people as we re- read in this account they were on the way to worship in the afternoon to the temple and they are coming ac- across a, a situation kind of all of a sudden it is not by appointment instantly they were called to minister to that lame man our servants of the lord serving the church serving the people of god we should always be ready to serve the people of god with the gifts that the lord has given us we must be always ready to preach the gospel whenever the opportunity arises in this modern world pastors normally our preaching appointments preaching opportunities are by appointment sometimes people has to tell us in advance and sometimes we plan how we can reach that place we schedule the timing and sometimes we 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 follow the itinerary or the plans we make or the plans made by the church and occasionally when instances come up in our lives where we have to minister to a person immediately uh, we may say oh i am very busy i cannot do this we try to avoid that come next day maybe i will do that another day we are naturally tempted to say excuses but we can learn much from the ministry of jesus and the apostles they were always ready to serve the lord they believed in the providence of god the people whom they come across sometimes people may come asking questions sometimes people may end up in situations where they are in a certain situation in a maybe health condition or a financial trouble they need our help immediately and as pastors as servants we should always remember that the lord has sent us as ministers to serve them and we should be there to help them and we should minister to them we may not be able to heal the person suppose a sick person is seeking our help our prayers we may not be able to heal in the same way like peter and john did uh, at least we can pray for their healing we can pray for god's help to comfort them and comfort strengthen them in the time of difficulty they are going through so from this account of peter and john we can learn that we must be ready to serve the lord to minister to the people whenever the opportunity arises to glorify his name even through such providential arrangements the lord brings in our day to day life and we also should be willing to minister to all kinds of people be willing to minister to everybody when we look at this account this lame man he is physically not well he is just a beggar maybe we normally see beggars as a person who is very poor as somebody who in the lower class of the society we may not be happy to have a conversation with them to talk to them to hear what they want what they like to tell to us many times actually come to this office place uh, from my house and every day i need to cross this busy traffic junction and it's quite a busy junction as elmeta junction as you all know every day morning and evening whenever i go from here or whenever i come back when we wait at the traffic signal many times in the near to the side doors we can see some beggars coming 
Sometimes they may have some pens or some tissue papers or something in their hand to sell. Sometimes they may not have. And they keep on knocking at the uh, glass doors of the car. And it's, it's, it's an everyday thing. And when I see it every day, I came to a stage where I have no interest to talk to them. I'm not interested to strike a conversation with them. Of course, uh, we are traveling, we are inside the car. Sometimes we may come across people walking and asking. We may be able to help and maybe to talk to them. But normally we try to avoid such conversations with beggars. But if somebody is coming and knocking at my glass doors, maybe well dressed, looking, educated, I think I will maybe quick to respond, you know, maybe I will pull down the glass and ask, what do you need? How can I help? But since he's a beggar, I like to, or I prefer to avoid them. And that's the natural way we respond to, especially people, poor people or those who are afflicted by certain uh, sickness like this. But here we can see the readiness from Peter and John to minister to such a person. They were not ignoring them. They were not saying, oh, we came to worship. I need to be inside the temple as soon as possible. Let me think about it later. We can see them willing to listen and minister to them. As pastors, as ministers called to serve the Lord, if the Lord gives you opportunity to minister to the people, let us be willing to minister to all kinds of people. I'm sure they learned it from the Lord Jesus himself. While he was in this earth, while ministering, he equally ministered to all kinds of people. Men, women, rich men, poor men. And okay, sometimes we see the record of people inviting him to their houses. He was willing to go there. He was willing to spend time with them. Even the people whom the society considers as outsiders. Jesus was willing to go there and sit with them and to minister to them. As Christians who are redeemed by him, who are following this great master, let us also be willing to minister to everybody, irrespective of their social status or educational status or their health condition, whatever condition they may be in. Let us be ever willing to minister to them. And here we can see Peter and John also openly, Peter and John saying that they don't have money. Silver and gold, I we don't have. What we have, we give to you. When we serve the Lord, especially those who are serving the Lord as pastors or ministers in the churches, sometimes we may be in such situations where we may not have money or we may not have physical provisions to help a person in, in need. When we look at the ministry that the Lord has entrusted to us, it is not like secular job where we, have, we can have an assured pay or the churches will always support us. The times where the, these apostles and the disciples ministered in the earlier days, they had to minister whether they have financial provisions or everything for their family taken care or not. And they were willing to do that. I think many of you know we have a Bible college and many students come there to study. And sometimes after they graduate, this may be a question deep in their hearts. How can I serve the Lord? Which church will support me? How can I make sure that my families are taken care of? We may have the conviction that the Lord called me to preach. The Lord gave me the gifts to minister to the church. Sometimes when we think about the family, the financial needs personally or maybe for our families, we may think that, oh, I may not be able to enter into ministry. Maybe I should do something else. Maybe I should do some work and abandon the calling that the Lord has given us. But here we can see an amazing testimony of Peter and John where they testify that they don't have material wealth. They don't have the money to help them. 
like many others who may be able to minister to that person in that ways but i have the spiritual gifts given by the lord which may be of help to your soul which can minister to your soul more than the body let us all take this as an encouragement to serve the lord irrespective of the financial condition we are in let us don't look at our material things what i have and when we have all that then i will serve the lord sometimes we may have these thoughts in our mind maybe i need a car to go to all the places then i will go for evangelism or maybe the church provide me all that is necessary for me to do this then i will go and do that work then i will preach but here we can see peter and john willing to exercise the spiritual gifts in whatever circumstance they are in because they know their calling is to minister to the spiritual needs of the people and they should be always ready to do that as servants called by the lord as we heard today let us be willing to serve all kinds of people let us be ever ready to help the people and let us also ensure that without being concerned about material things or other burdens let us be willing to serve the souls of the people using the spiritual gifts that the lord has given and here we can see they walking together and serving the lord together peter and john going together for worship this is also something that we as a church as ministers of god as servants of god we need to take note even as believers we have to take note we may come to faith maybe as one person in a family tasting the salvation that the lord has offered to us but there are other believers whom the lord has called let us be willing to call able together with them even when jesus sent the disciples to proclaim the gospel he sent them as two people together they were asked to go and serve in this modern world i think everybody like to remain independent and that's a, a big term i think even in churches you know even when we ask uh, those who study it in bible colleges when once they graduate how you want to serve the lord i want to be independent and they are not interested in working together with other god's people they just want to do everything as individuals but is this the pattern of ministry we see in the bible the disciples they were happy to serve together with other people because we all belong to christ we are all redeemed by the lord jesus and the lord has given his gifts for the edification of the church there are other men who may have the similar gifts we can co labor with them and this should be our desire even for the churches that the churches should have many leaders to co labor together who are spiritually gifted even for this small congregation as a church we should earnestly pray that the lord will raise more men to preach more elders more deacons to co labor to labor together in the spiritual work that the lord has given to us as I am thankful that there are many already to call labor with me here to serve the Lord here. It is a blessing. It is a blessing that the Lord provides laborers to serve together with the church. And when we read this account, we can see it is Peter who healed. John is just with Peter, and we don't see any comments where. John is kind of jealous towards Peter, or you know, he is also happy that God's name is glorified. As ministers of the Lord, when we see us, when we serve the Lord, even in the church as believers, when the Lord uses somebody else for His glory, maybe in a greater way than us, let us be thankful to the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes we think that, oh, okay, He is doing all that; He is so gifted. and we may think that oh i am sidelined you know I, if in the modern context something of this thing happened maybe they may go separately and start an individual ministry and call it maybe peter's ministry and john's ministry 
they may uh, that's happening in many many places where people start together and they say one person the lord they see one person the lord uses in a mighty way compared to the other person then they cannot work together and you know they go separately and try to work together instead of praising the lord for using maybe another brother in a greater manner in the kingdom of god so here we see peter and john being used by the lord in some special ways to minister to this lame man and the lord continued to use the apostles to minister to the early church believers and when the lord uses his servants especially people whom the lord bestows spiritual gifts maybe it's to preach maybe it's in the area of music in our context and when we do many things a lot for the lord that also brings attention from the people of god and we can see that very evident in the passage which we read the people there they were amazed to see what the lord did through peter and john and it can be a great opportunity where peter and john can take the credit of all the things happened and be adored by the people and be praised by the people and just sit in that comfort zone enjoying the praises and the adoration of the people but here we can see they use this as an opportunity to glorify god to take the attention of the people who witnessed this miracle to the christ who gave them this spiritual gift when lord called us to serve in the church maybe be it preaching be it singing be it in any area of the service when the lord uses us mightily and blesses our work let us ensure that we don't use this to draw attention to ourselves let us make sure that the others will look to christ who is the giver of all this gift and here we can read in the portion which we read how they are even saying why you are marveling at us it is indeed through christ that this man is healed was told and when peter saw it he answered unto the people ye men of israel my why marvel ye at this or why look he so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk they understood that it is by the power of the lord jesus it is a spiritual gift that the lord jesus bestowed on them that made them to minister to this brother and they want all the people to look to christ because it is he who can do this miracle it is he the one who heals not them they are just instruments in the hands of god while we serve the church as members part of christ's body let us all remember that we are instruments in the hands of god let us not take pride in the spiritual gifts that the lord has given and try to boast about it and try to use it as a means to bring attention to ourselves in this age of internet maybe preachers or those who are serving the lord it's is a great opportunity where we can preach or sing or make music albums or whatever and get more likes and shares and comments and maybe we may have millions of views and many many celebrity pastors get puffed up by all these things and they even do so many wicked things and they use all this fame they get in the name of christ to bring attention to themselves let us pray for the leaders of our churches let us pray that even us as a church the leaders in this church let us pray for the leaders in faithful churches that when the lord uses them in the ministry may christ have all the glory may the attention of people's eyes go to lord jesus and let us pray that the men will be preserved in taking the attention of the people to the cross not to them let us pray because many faithful men whom we respect and adore had fallen 
we will be learn in the history of the church let us not take it for granted even i myself let us pray for god's grace that the lord will always use us to bring attention of the people to the cross to lord jesus and here we can see how the lord worked irrespective of all the weaknesses peter and john they just had the spiritual gifts given by the lord the man he don't have anything he is not able to walk he is just looking for help and we read in the account that he was carried to the temple by other men to sit there but irrespective of all this the lord worked the lord achieved his purpose sometimes when we look at our own surroundings our own conditions it seems like this we don't see any hope we don't see any possibility that the lord can work out something good out of it but the lord interferes and we may even look at our own spiritual our gifts that the lord has given to us and we may think that oh i preach or i sing i serve the church i may not see anything good may coming out or i may not i am not seeing the fruits of it and we may feel discouraged and here we see the great work of the lord in turning the the whole scenario upside down and even the people who stood there were amazed by the great work that the lord has done through them and they glorified the lord jesus and the lord works in our weakness in the midst of difficulties the lord works and it is recorded that even the healing that the lame man experienced he was not dependent upon the quality of the faith that he had let us turn to verse 16 where it is the same portion where it is recorded that and in his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom he see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all compare this with many claims of many so called healers they try to heal somebody they try to do some miracle in the name of jesus and if it don't happen they say oh you don't have enough faith that's why you are not healed it is not because i i am not gifted or god is not through god not working through me or god is not interested to work at that moment because your faith is so weak or maybe you are not living holy as you ought to maybe there have maybe some sins which you need to deal with first then the lord will work and this is a way many faith healers even minister to unbelievers they expect them to settle certain things then the lord will work miracles in their in their life look at the miracle accounts in the scripture the lord did the miracles irrespective of the spiritual or the condition of the persons involved the lord want to raise even a dead person the lord can raise him his power is not limited by our experiences or the spiritual experiences we have as men the lord want to interfere and accomplish his purpose he will do it it is not based on the quality of faith or even the quality of the holy life peter and john lived many who involved in this kind of faith healing they say oh you know we have a habit of even adoring them maybe respecting them thinking that oh they are so holy men because of that they are able to do that here also lord is using peter and john not because they are so perfectly holy or they are far better than everybody else or other apostles compared to other apostles lord uses weaker vessels lord uses sinful men to accomplish his purpose let us find comfort in the fact that lord can use all of us sometimes we may feel that oh my faith is small 
and I am not spiritually gifted to serve him as others and we may feel dejected. But indeed the word of the Lord strengthens us especially through accounts like this and reminds us that the Lord can work irrespective of the weakness. Sometimes the inabilities that we feel we feel discouraged in such situations the Lord can minister to us and the Lord can minister to us even through his servants through God's people whom the Lord appointed or chosen to minister to us let us be thankful that the Lord continues to minister to us in that way if Lord chose us to minister to us based on my faith my spiritual life or my holiness I think we all will be done. We cannot expect God to work based on our abilities. Indeed, we are thankful that the Lord ministers to us in the midst of our weakness. He is merciful and compassionate to minister to us in, even in such occasions. And here we can see they talking to the crowd around and telling them to look to Christ for their salvation. This may be a wonderful opportunity for Peter and John to have conduct a big sermon on healing and tell all the people, bring all the beggars around, all the lame people around, all those who cannot see, let us do a healing campaign and do a healing sermon. That's a new trend in, uh, in our generation, right? People are not interested in hearing the gospel. He, people are not interested in what Christ did on the cross for the salvation of our souls. Many crusades, many conferences, when we hear about it and we go there, if it's a 30, 45 minutes time for the speaker, most of it or maybe more than half of it, they, they take it for healing and they preach healing. Instead of preaching the gospel, instead of preaching and exhorting Lord Jesus, they make it as an opportunity to preach about healing. Let us look at the examples of Christ and the apostles, the way they did ministry. Of course, they healed people. They were not preaching healing and miracles. They were preaching Christ. They were preaching the gospel. Here we can see in verse 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But he denied the Holy One, the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Full gospel is announced there. To the crowd gathered there. Oh, you killed your savior. You killed the author of life. You killed the person who can heal the lame, who can raise the dead. Look to him, not to us. You chose a murderer instead of the prince of life, instead of the author of life. A congregation who as you are listening to this sermon, examine your heart. Are you rejecting Christ? Are you despising Christ? Are you denying him? Are you choosing a murderer? Are you following the devil and the ways of the world instead of following the author of life, the prince of life? Look to him. He is able not only to minister to those who are physically afflicted, he laid his life on the cross for our redemption. He can heal us from all our iniquities. He, he, he redeems our souls. He shed his blood on the cross for our redemption. Look to him. Indeed, he alone is the one who can heal us completely in the true sense. Because in him, there is full healing for our souls. Stop saying excuses. Stop rejecting him. Stop denying him. Look to him. 
He laid his life on the cross for us. He is the author of life. He is the prince of life. You owe your life to him. This lame man owe his life to his creator. And by God's grace on this appointed day, he was able to get healing not only for his body, but he was able to get healed in his souls. He was able to look to Christ. And this is what the apostles is telling to the people gathered around. Stop looking at this man. Stop looking at me. Look to the cross. Don't despise him. Don't reject him. Believe in him. He is the one who can bring redemption to your souls. Let us as a church continue to look to Christ for our redemption and for our salvation.